Hi everyone, welcome to my top 10 expansions for Essen 2016. Now I have gone through the, the Essen preview list, I will, I will link the Eric Martin's Essen preview list on Board Game Geek is amazing, full of information, but I've gone through a lot, a, lot, a lot of games and so it's good that there is a little more of a use for it in making this video as well. So this is just expansions. I, I, did, I separated these out because it seems like there were so many expansions very high up in my list. I thought it'd be better to kind of separate it out, but then I realized there wasn't really more than 10 to do so. You know, this is kind of all of the expansions I'm excited about as well. So let's get started. Number 10, we have Steam Park Play Dirty, and this is from Federico Latini and Lorenzo Silva. I really like Steam Park. It's it, part of it's d down to, you know, the the beautiful art. It's Marie Cadoir who does, you know, the Dixit art and, uh, and then we held hands and beautiful, beautiful artwork. It's got the 3D, uh, 3D rides. It's theme park themed and I love that anyway. And it's it's got the nice, uh, the real time, roll as fast, roll as many times as you want, as fast as you can, but uh, whoever locks in last is gonna kind of get punished. So you might get what you want, but you are gonna have a disadvantage for being last. Really like Steam Park, and this is a modular expansion, which is always nice. It includes new stands with different powers. It includes uh, characters to play as that are gonna have a, a unique game altering power for the, for the whole game. There are espionage dice. That sounded a bit mean to begin with, but it sounds like they just let you copy other players' actions, but they're gonna uh, they're gonna cost you something to be able to copy those actions. Uh, there is uh, new rides that are going to cost a lot up front, but give more benefit in the long run, and also there are components for five players. So if you always wanted to play Steam Park five players, you now can. Number nine. We have Concordia, Gallia, and Corsica, and this is from Matt Gertz. And I love Concordia; it's a fantastic game. I have got the, you know, the Britannia, and I can't remember what the other map it was in that set, and the maps that came with Concordia Salsa last year. And so, more for it is always exciting. And in Gallia you only start with your land colonist rather than land and sea and you need to make your way over and settle in one of the coastal towns to be able to start using uh, sea colonists that sounds like a nice little twist and in corsica we play on the tightest map ever in concordia and so that one is especially meant for two to three players which is great for me because most of my plays are two players so that is uh, concordia gallia and corsica Next up is Russian Railroads, American Railroads from Helmut Ochli and Leonard Ogler. And I love Russian Railroads and its expansion German Railroads last year added some amazing things to it. The different player boards and the kind of the modular thing where you could get to a space on your player board and now you've got a choice of which tiles you're going to place on it that are going to say which effects those spaces are going to give for the rest of the game. It was really, really nice addition. And this is a mini expansion, so technically it's not a full expansion, but it's going to add more player boards for American Railroads this time and new game elements. And so I don't really know what's involved in it, but couldn't be more excited about the prospect of more Russian Railroads. At number seven, it's Peloponnese Card Game. Patronus from Burned Eisenstein and I, I love Peloponnese the, bo the board game, I love the card game and the solo modes of both as well and the first expansion for the card game seems to follow the route that the, the board game expansions took so this adds an extra round, an extra player and it adds Patronus cards that are going to offer some more protection from the disasters in the game which depending on your luck can really destroy you. Right, when we first started playing the card game we it, turned out that we'd gotten quite lucky and really bad things hadn't happened and then we played a couple of games especially four player where one player just got crippled by the disasters so I'm sure that if that's ever happened to you in Peloponnese the card game you will love some extra protection from that. At number six Pandemic the Cure Experimental Meds and this is from Matt Leacock and Thomas Lohmann and I, I really like Pandemic the Cure it's a really fast playing addictive kind of tiny distillation of Pandemic and I'm also a big fan of the expansions for regular Pandemic which are from uh, Thomas LeMann and Matt Leacock as well. So really looking forward to what's coming out f to expand uh, the, the Cure and I don't know much about what's in there but 
obviously there are new rules included, new roles, not rules, and it looks like the purple disease is back, which is a great extra element from normal pandemic, and I'm sure much more will be involved as well. That's pandemic, the cure, experimental meds. At number five, Mystic Veil, Veil of Magic, from John D. Clare. And if you saw my Mystic Veil playthrough, then, you know, I love Mystic Veil. The only thing missing is more cards. You know, there's, there's, there's variety in the game, don't get me wrong. But in a game like that, where it's uh, not deck building, but card crafting, but you know what I mean. In any game like that, you want more and more and more so that it is going to be more and more different every time you play it. And this is going to include more advancement cards, which are the clear ones that you slide in to, ch to craft your cards, and the veil cards that you can gain from, you know, getting all of the the resources from the cards that you've crafted. And it's gonna add some extra gameplay things as well. It's gonna introduce powers that are triggered when you buy Veil cards and advancements that emphasize the Guardian ability. But above all, more variety in Mystic Veil can only be a good thing. At number four, Oh My Goods, Longsdale in Offer. And in the, I haven't apologized in this video for my pronunciation of things yet. This is from Alexander Fister, and if you saw the uh, the playthrough of Oh My Goods, then you'll already know how much I like that game. It's a really nice game of uh, building buildings to kind of upgrade resources. You're starting off with coal that's not worth very much money, but you're trading it up and up and up through these chains of buildings to be able to store goods that are worth a ton of points just by themselves. And also there is a push your luck element involved where there's uh, there's like daytime markets where we reveal cards one at a time. Then we decide where our workers are gonna go into the buildings that need resources. And we do that before we find out all of the resources that are gonna be available. So there's a nice little push your luck element on top of that as well. The expansion for this kind of, I, 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 I really took me by surprise a little bit because it's it's not just uh, you'd expect something that's just like uh, a few new ways to play more cards and things but this is a story based expansion that's going to tell a story over five chapters of uh, of riots and a looming war in the land that we are going to try and stop and our you know our actions in oh my goods are going to steer the course of history and change this story it's it sounds uh, very unique and very surprising for for a, a little card game i'm very excited about that and that's going to be available in some kind of limited edition at essen at number three orleon trade and intrigue from reiner stockhausen and I love Oleon. I have done two videos, I think, so far of the some of the things that were in the Invasion expansion, which made me love Oleon even more because it added more solo modes, more ways to play the normal game, and a cooperative mode that's also fantastic. This is going to add, it's a smaller expansion than Invasion was, but it's still going to add quite a few extra things. It's going to add order cards. So in Oleon, you could grab goods and things that were worth points at the end of the game, but you were just kind of keeping them and maybe spending them if uh, certain events made you lose them. In this there are now order cards so certain cities around the map are going to want certain goods so that is going to steer your decision of which cities to go to to gather goods and which cities to end up in to deliver those goods and they're going to be worth points at the end of the game. There is a new event system where the events tiles from the base game are thrown out and we use 18 of the 34 new events tiles. So every game is going to be different. Not only are the events going to be in a different order, but there are going to be new events and certain events might not even show up. So you can't be sure that certain things are happening. So that's going to shake up the games as well. There's a new beneficial deeds board where placing your workers on there sending your workers away can give you more benefits. In the base game, it was mainly, you know, making money or making, advancing on the book track. This is going to give you abilities like maybe drawing more from your bag or advancing you on certain development tracks and things. So that sounds like an interesting twist on uh, the development board. There are, uh, I think, three new place tiles, so they're just shuffled in to add a bit more variety in the game. And finally, there is the intrigue portion, where instead of a beneficial deeds board, you play with an intrigue board, and placing, sending your workers away to the intrigue board is going to mess up your opponents, maybe steal things from their board or stop them doing things that they were planning to do. And I'm not at all interested in that part of it, but it is there, and so that's going to open up all the on for people that uh, didn't think it was interactive enough. So there's something for everyone in the new expansion for Orleon. 
At number two, Adventureland King and Princess from Michael Kiesling and Wolfgang Kramer. And I love Adventureland. We played it the other day for the first time in a while and I was reminded just how much I love for, for such a simple game where you are you draw, you draw two cards every turn. The board is a big grid of, uh, of the city that we're in and you put a, a thing on that board. It's either herbs or swords to help you with fighting, companions to stay with you or monsters to fight. It's such a simple game and it's got, it's, it's, it was the start of Harbour's new thing of uh, rather than just children's game this is a family game so there's a kind of step up in uh, difficulty and strategy to it and so it had three different modes where it started from a very easy rule set to not a difficult rule set but a more interesting rule set this is the king and princess expansion where it's going to add three more scenarios to play with and the re the kind of components you need to play with them and there's adventureland just there if you were interested, if you wanted proof that I like it and it's there. Uh, and the, the, the scenarios seem really interesting as well. Number four is another competitive one where there are keys all across the kingdom and we are trying to, find, to grab all of the different colored keys to be able to save the princess. That sounds really cool. Number five is cooperative, which sounds amazing. It's it was it was great in all the on when any game suddenly takes a turn and says, okay, now this competitive game, now it's got a cooperative mode in it. And this is where we are all working together to fight much stronger looking fog creatures than normal. And number six is a semi-cooperative uh, scenario, which I'm not too interested in. I don't really like semi-cooperative uh, things, but it's another situation where, you know, there's something for everyone being included in these expansions. And finally, my number one expansion for Essen 2016 is Alchemists, the King's Golem. And this is from Matus Kotri. I'm very sorry about pron pronouncing, I'm sure I've mentioned it in this video. Uh, I, I loved Alchemists. That was from Essen 2014. And it's a big, heavy game where we are, we are alchemists trying to make these potions from different ingredients. And there is an app involved, which I loved where the app reads the ingredients you've got on your display and tells you the result of your potion. And then you have a lovely logic puzzle of placing what the result was and trying to mark down the, you're trying to figure out what the base elements are that make each ingredient. It's gonna be different every game. And you have a pad and a, a lovely little grid in front of you to try and work this out. I love the logic puzzle nature of it as well. The actual, you know, worker placement was very interesting as well in how you, you could test potions on an assistant rather than yourself so that the assistant would suffer bad effects because you could get punished if you drink a bad potion yourself, obviously. And there was, we were trying to sell potions to adventurers and you published your findings once you thought you were sure on what a... Uh, thing was then you could publish your things in the you know the official scientific uh, papers and get rewarded for it but uh, there was an interesting thing where if you weren't sure you could secretly your your publication actually was worth no points but everybody thinks that you've put it down there so they might kind of jump on your research and put it on there but that, I'm just explaining what Alchemist is this is an expansion I love Alchemist is what I'm trying to say this is adding even more to it. It's another modular expansion, which is beautiful. And the, what's new in it? Well, if you want in depth, you can look at Paul Grogan. He is doing some fantastic uh, in-depth previews and he'll also be showing it off at Essen. Uh, he, so basically what's in it, it's got cards that can customize every player's starting situation rather than everyone starting with the same thing. These cards will offer you little variations on it. There is a stack of turn order boards. So in the in the normal game, it's, it's one of those things where the earlier you wake up, that you'll go first, but you won't get many things. Whereas the later you want to wake up, you're going to get some amazing things, but you're going to get last choice on what's available on the board. This adds a different board for each round. So you, you're you not quite sure what you're going to get until that's flipped over. There is a new place to publish research that's going to change how that works a little bit. And finally, and this sounds amazing, a challenge where we are trying to animate a golem from magic and clay. 
I <laughs> couldn't be more excited about, you know, whatever it was going to be. It's just adding more to Alchemist, which is a game I loved anyway. But it's, as always from CGE, it sounds very funny, it sounds very interesting, and I'm sure it's going to be a fantastic expansion. And that is my top 10 expansions for Essen 2016. Which expansions are you looking forward to? Which of, have I missed out that I should be looking out for at Essen? Let me know. And thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to see which games didn't make the top 10 or what my top 10 full games and that expansions are, then you can click the link somewhere above my head there. <laughs> Other than that, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you for the next video. Bye.